Hey, what's up? I'm gonna try and do a quick tutorial on uh, changing the oil and filter my uh, 2018 Honda Pilot. Really straightforward. Um, hopefully I don't run into any issues. I mean, it's, it's really pretty simple. They make it really accessible. Uh, it's my second time changing the oil and uh, should go pretty, pretty well. Underneath, you see on the front passenger side, engine oil is clearly labeled. That's the drain plug right there, 17 millimeters. Pretty easy to access. I had it loose already, that's why you see a little oil coming out. Um, it's already a little bit loose, and then if you just look up here, there's the oil filter. Simple. I already started uh, loosening it by hand. I'm going to just continue with uh, loosening this plug. I don't remember. Yeah, it's about hand tight. Trying out this new drain pan as well. From right. It's supposed to hold enough. This calls for 5.5 quarts. Uh, so my drain pan that I had will probably go over the top. If that much comes out, it'll probably be less coming out. Uh, from experience But I think I'm gonna overshoot this pan and have a mess to be honest uh, It usually comes out fairly quick. I'm keeping pressure on this drain plug pressure towards the front of the vehicle keeping the oil from Squirting out, but I think it's gonna be a mess to be honest. So let's see what happens here Well, look at that I think I'm gonna overrun the pan, but it's supposedly designed to drain in the center and accommodate 5.5, or at least. I mean, this says 15 quarts. So I'll get right back to you, let this drain, and be right back when I clean up a little bit. All right, we're back. Almost done draining the oil. I had to reposition the pan a little, but as you can see, it did accommodate the entire volume of oil that was in the vehicle. I'm going to reposition this jack stand also. Safety first, but I need to be able to get... This is just in case the jack fails, I mean, but I do want to make sure have something else in an emergency. I mean, this might not work too well, but it should help. I want to have this pan a little closer here. When I drain it, well, you loosen up the filter after this drains. You loosen up this filter here, and some more oil is going to come out. I think I'm going to do that now. Show you, it's right behind the splash guard. Started loosening it. It's fairly simple. I'll show you the brand too. I think I got the STP. Extended life filter. Starting to make a mess. There's quite a bit of oil still in the filter. I'm going to try and loosen it up here and then just carefully. I'm also keeping pressure up on the filter as I'm loosening. Actually, I don't remember that much oil coming. Still available, still contained in the filter last time, but as I loosen it, keep it this way, and then turn it upside down in the pan. I'm just going to leave it there. Let everything drain. Alright, so we're at engines uh, exposed. You got the hood up on the vehicle. You just poke your head around. You can see very clearly the type of oil. On the cap, I'm going to loosen up this cap. Take it off. Place it somewhere. You don't make a mess. And you won't lose it. You definitely don't want to lose it. So You can see clearly into the uh, oil fill hole. That's where we're going to put the oil. Grab the funnel. Set the funnel up. 
so we're ready to fill. Right. So before we fill, we still got a little trickle of oil. That's going to be okay. I want to show the filter that I vehicle called for. It's the STP S6607XL Extended Life. I mean, you know, it's it's really your preference. This one seemed to work fairly well. That's what came out. And uh, next we start installing the filter. This one recording. You want to open the filter up. You don't want to really make a mess on this filter. It's going right in. It's brand new. I'm going to put the camera down a second. Alright, so you can see. I'm going to remove that plastic. Obviously. It has an O-ring. You want to put your finger in the container. You don't want to make a mess, but you want to get some oil. Oil on your finger. Put it all around and make sure that that o-ring is coated well nice coating on there close up my container wipe off my finger a bit you're going to want a good grip on this it's the drain i'm going to put the drain plug in yep. In the oil pan, I just let that sit. Get a good look here. That's where that oil filter goes. You want to keep it tilted up towards the threads and don't hit anything on your way in. Place it on the threads, apply some pressure, and start turning to the right. If it feels too tight to start with, it's probably starting to strip the threads. Back it off. It should loosen. It should go on very, very easily. You see, I'm spinning it easily. Very loose. Now it's starting to get some pressure. I feel tension. So I'm turning to the right very carefully, cautiously, and slowly. Now I'm doing this by hand, right? They recommend a specific amount of turns. Usually once you start to feel it, it's tight. It could be. I know that full, you know, quarter turn, half turn, and tight is usually good. As tight as you can get it without really over wrenching it down with your hand. Uh, and then just the heat of the usage uh, usually tightens it up a bit more. Um, but you're going to check for leaks after everything's done anyway. So we got the filter in, we drained all the oil. It's still just dripping. And now I'm going to put in the plug. I'm doing this with my right hand so I can record. So, find the threads. Try and keep this drain plug. with pressure into the hole as straight as you can, accurately as you can. And if it goes in this easily by hand, your threads are lined up properly and you're good to go. Tighten it all the way up by hand. Grab my rag. Grab your rag. Do a wipe. Wipe here on the frame. This one was a little messy. Just do a basic wipe. You can clean it up a lot more later if you want. I like to keep everything clean. It's easier to spot any leaks in the future. There's probably a puddle up here. Okay, that's good enough for now. And at this point, I'm going to pull off the gloves. Most of the dirty um, stuff is done. The filter should be good, should be tight enough. I still got this old drained oil under here. It's a bit cramped, crowded. I don't know how many times I've hit it, knocked it over, and wound up with a big mess. So at this point, 
And by the way, I'm highly recommending this oil drain container. 15 quart Harbor Freight. As you can see, the oil goes in and it's pretty much contained in there. I mean, uh, you pull out the open top containers, it's really not even worth it. You wind up with a bigger mess than this. I mean, I made a little mess, but you know, you start pulling that container, it gets caught on something. And next thing you know, you know, half a quart of oil is on your driveway, wherever you're working. So, get back to here. Yeah, I got a lot more room. Very easy to see now. Can really get under here, show you. I mean, this is a simple part. Make sure your ratchet's set to tighten. Righty tighty. All right, so. I never use a torque wrench, although I should, but tight and a little bit tighter, you're not trying to wrench it down. I mean, there's a washer on there, you know, if you're tightening with a wrench, there's a lot of leverage on there, so you just make it where that thing ain't moving, you know. You know, try your best, but not overly tight, that's all, and that should be good on that. All right, next step. Just filling the oil back up. Remember, I got my got my funnel set up already. This is the brand new container. Since it's 5.5 that it calls for, take the brand new container and use the whole thing. And you know we're at five, and now the containers have a gauge. So pretty easy to tell pretty accurate instead of guessing how much you put in having to check the oil levels so I'm gonna fill this drink the whole five quart container and get right back this is the end of the five quart container I'm a real cheapskate most of the time uh, well like to waste things you know you pay for them why waste it I mean this is trivial drips but I like to leave it up there upside down it's a little windy today it might wind up making a mess and not even be worth it but you can see it's the five quart so the next container I'm gonna just need a uh, half a quart all right so I'm fairly confident everything should be buttoned up tight enough uh, take a quick look A little bit of oil there on the washer, but I believe that's just residual. I mean, it's tight enough. I like to do this. And you want to check it, you know, if they're running the vehicle for a while. Let's look for puddles not in the same spot, obviously, that the vehicle's parked. But wipe down things as good as you can. Take a little look around stuff. And, uh, you know... There's always a chance that you didn't tighten this filter up enough. As I said, pretty much crank it as much as you can without overdoing it. Hand tight, you get a feel for it eventually. You always just come back under. Don't drive far without double checking after an oil change. Everything is uh, copacetic. Alright, so this is the whole reason why we did the oil change. It was uh, maintenance due soon, B1 indicator on the dash. Uh, when you see that, I mean, you go onto the onto the steering wheel, and uh, here's your controls, you know, for the dash. You go down. Um, oil life was 15%. Still says 15%. Doesn't automatically reset. So uh, once you're on that screen, just keep going down until you get to that oil life uh, percentage B1, and then you're going to use the reset button. Uh, you're going to hold that. Press it in, hold it down, wait, keep it down, keep it down, keep it down. That's it. Now it's asking you maintenance reset or cancel. And uh, you use these to scroll. Obviously, it's on cancel, up, and then press the reset button. Maintenance reset complete. Oil life 100%. So, uh, I was pretty much complete. That's about it.
All right, thanks for watching.